All right, so today we're working on the input side of our fresh water tank. And so in our tank, we have three um, designated entries for our tank. So one is for the fill, one is for a hot water recirculating circuit, and then the last one is for a vent. Um, so we're gonna work on plumbing those in. Um, we're gonna have a series of valves that will allow you, one, to recirculate the hot water um, so that there's, as soon as you turn the shower on, there's hot water. Um, the other one is when, we, when we're on city water, when we're on city fill, um, we'll be able to turn on a valve to fill the tank. And so that, though, will be an electronic valve. So there'll be a solenoid valve that kicks on, and then that'll start filling the tank. Um, the other thing is that's going to tee off, and then city water will then go to the back and then will be available for the whole system um, as far as if we want to use city water hookups instead of our pump. So we're plumbing all that in. We're trying to figure out how to make it all fit. Um, the valve is relatively large, so it's a little larger than I expected. So we're kind of having to put a few elbows and things to get it to go to the right place. So anyway, we're routing that stuff now. All right, so why would we want to have a solenoid for the fill valve? And so some of you may be wondering why we made that choice. And so I'll kind of go through a scenario where something like that would be super beneficial. So one, one scenario that we can think of is we've heard that there are RV parks or at people's homes where you hook up to water and the pressure is less than ideal. So in that situation, um, what we would do is we would run off our pump. So we would hook up the water the same way um, as if we're on city water, but we would turn the city water valve off and run off of our pump. And so the reason we would have the city water on is we would use our home automation system to keep the level in the tank between say 40 and 60%. And that way it's just one less thing to worry about. If we had a manual valve, we'd have to come out here, turn that thing on and then wait until it gets to a certain percentage or until that's enough water and then remember to turn that thing off. So it's just one less thing to worry about um, when we're at a park 
uh, and are hooked up to water where we're not really boondocking, we're not worried too much about conserving water, we're just using water uh, kind of like normal people do in their home. That's one scenario we could think of. I'm sure there's more, but it's all gonna be tied into our home automation system. And so that makes it just a really nice thing to be able to control the level in your tank via that type of connection. So yeah. we have plumbed in our inlet hose. We decided to use this, uh, this is half inch reinforced braided, uh, just drinking hose. What we were gonna use was one of these because the, you know this is half inch and this is half inch. The problem is the opening on that, I don't know if you can see that, is so small we were, I just didn't feel comfortable using this. It's funny to have all this huge one inch piping everywhere and then feed it with, you know, something that's that little. So, so we've gone with half inch. So these are half inch connectors, the standard RV connectors, and this is a half inch connector here. So hopefully that will flow. Um, hopefully that'll flow pretty well. And we have a couple extra of these. Um, we did leave, a slack in this line so that it, when we close the door you know there's a little bit of give in it so that's how we plumbed that in all right so we're getting ready to solder the ends on so we got to clean them up really well and um, clean both sides so this side gets cleaned with this one and so what we saw is that you want to make sure that the copper is super shiny like that. And then that way it promotes good ad adhesion with the solder. So there's no dirt or anything like that. Kind of contaminating them. Alright, we'll probably have to remove this little cap thing. So, fit over just like that. And we'll put solder in that joint and that should hold it. Alright, so we sweat we sweated the ends on um, that went pretty smoothly and then I wanted to see what it would look like if you gave them a little polish and so I did this one and so <laughs> it was a little more work than we thought <laughs> to polish them up but they do look quite a bit better okay, okay that's a nice curve Okay, there we go. All right, so what we ended up doing is putting a nice gradual curve in there and then um, VHB taping this strap and then duck, you know, gorilla duct taping that down to the tank. So that looks like it's gonna hold. Um, it's just really to keep that thing from rattling around. So it looks like it's doing that. So anyway, we're gonna call that done. So <laughs> I think it's mostly plumbed down here. Um, now we've got a, the next thing when we hit up plumbing again is to plumb these. So that should be fairly easy. Um, and then all of these will go inside except for one, which will be an outside shower, which we still have to figure that out too. So um, that'll be the next steps. Now that supply has been run into the manifolds, we thought that we would give you an overview of how the system works before we move to the inside of the bus to start roughing in all the fixtures. First, let's review the major components. To start with, we have the water inlet, which works as both a check valve and a pressure regulator set to 65 PSI. Next are our water filters, which are a three-step whole house system. 
Next we have our fresh tank, which holds 163 gallons. The water pump we're using is actually a shallow well pump that runs at 15 gallons per minute while keeping the pressure between 40 and 60 psi. Then we have the Girard Tankless On-Demand Propane Water Heater. Finally, we're using manifolds for cold and hot water distribution in a home run style system. Next, we'll share the basic operation and configuration of our system. To begin with, we have three check valves, one that's built into the inlet, one after the filters, and one that's built into the control module on the water pump. The system also has nine control valves that allow us to manage the flow of the water through the system. We have planned for six different configurations of our system. Let's walk through each one. For a city water configuration, if we have hookups and we have good pressure, the water will flow through the filters, bypass the tank, and make its way into the manifolds. When we want to fill our tanks with a city water hookup, we'll simply turn on the solenoid valve at the tank fill and this will allow the water to flow through the filters and into our tank. When using the water in our fresh water tank, we'll open up the tank outlet valves and the pump valve and turn the pump on allowing the water to flow into the manifolds. If we ever need to refilter the water in our fresh tank, this configuration allows the pump to pull the water from the tank, redirect it through the filters, and then push it back into the tank. This configuration allows a simple gravity drain of our fresh water tank. If we need to fill our tank from a water bladder or a low pressure water source, we can use our pump to pull through the drain, push that water through the filters, and then fill our tank. In order to finish the plumbing, we need to finalize the locations of our water fixtures. So next week, we head back into the bus and start construction on the kitchen.